Thank you for saying to you. Now let's talk health. Uh, today we're looking at the most highly abused prescription medicines and the legislation around dispensing them. And of course, uh, doing justice to that is Kenneth Etok Afan, a pharmacist with over seven years experience in clinical and community pharmacy, drug supply, chain management, and digital healthcare. It's such a pleasure to have you in the studio. Thank with you us once again. Thank you. Fantastic. So um, I know we've touched on this um, some weeks back, but I feel we have the need to actually expatiate and make people understand why you go to the pharmacy sometimes and you're told you cannot be sold certain medication. Yeah. Uh, so le le let's talk about this, um, the, the medication. Okay, um, so those classes of medications fall under something called prescription-only medicines, and um, they are under something we also call control drugs. Control right? drugs. Um, and those control drugs are not supposed to be sold in the community pharmacy without a valid doctor's mm -hmm. prescription. Not just a doctor's prescription, but a valid, valid doctor's prescription. Let me make you pause there. Yeah. You said valid. Yeah. Emphasis on the valid. valid. Yeah. How can you tell it is valid? Um, so there are certain things in a prescription that has to be there to make sure it's valid. So the doctor's name has to be there. The okay. date has to be there. Okay. The name of the prescribing facility, that is the hospital in which the medicine was prescribed from. Okay. Also, the dosage of the medicine, the okay. date, and the signature of the prescriber. Those are, those are things that make a prescription valid. Okay. And without it, you cannot, it invalidates a prescription. Okay, so yeah. there's no such thing as maybe a scribbled um, medication on paper. No, those don't work. It doesn't work. Okay. It doesn't work, and it, it completely invalidates. And you can't, the pharmacist is not even supposed to sell prescription medicines with those kind of prescription because you can go in for it. So there's something called the Disposal Poisons Book in a community pharmacy okay. that helps the, that in which the um, PCN, that's the Pharmacist Council of Nigeria, Nigeria, helps to regulate the sale of controlled medicines. So without that, and um, without that, pharmacists cannot um, sell medications, right? And every medication that is um, sold has to be properly documented the prescriber, prescriber's name, the date in which it was dispensed, all that has to be properly documented because every year, the PCN, that's the Pharmacist Council of Nigeria, checks it just to make sure that everything is complete and all the drugs are intact. Yeah. Okay. So now, um, going back to where you were before, what, what you were talking about, too, we already know quite well now that, that there are some medications that you cannot just gain access to. Right. So in a situation where you are given a prescription and you lost it, and you happen to be coming from a government hospital mm -hmm. where to get another prescription, it will probably cost you, a, you know, a lot of stress. Let's put it that way. Yeah. It, is it possible for a concession to be given? And if so, how? Um, so it's possible, especially if the pharmacy in which you're going to has a relationship with the hospital. Okay. Right? So they can easily call the hospital to confirm that, oh, did you see this patient? Did you see this? Government um, hospital. Yeah, there's some, that's, if you, if the doctor, <laughs> not the hospital, not the entity, <laughs> the doctor, so okay. the prescriber. So for, okay. for example, maybe the patient sees maybe Dr. A, okay. right, and comes out from Dr. A's consulting room and comes to your pharmacy and say, oh, pharmacist, oh, sorry, I misplaced my prescription and everything, but I saw Dr. A. Okay. And if you're lucky and the pharmacist has a relationship with Dr. A, you can call Dr. Can call a, Dr. To a to confirm that, oh, did you see this patient? But if he doesn't have that kind of relationship yeah, or is a different you pharmacy, you have to go back you have to, to get go it. Back. Yeah, because okay. it's quite important. Okay. Yeah. So what kind of medication now can pass that check? Which ones can be allowed? Because, you know, abuse of medication is actually prevalent. Right. I remember we also talked about that extensively at some point. Sure. So what medication can be used? Because, say, for example, cough syrup. Yeah. People drink <laughs> cough syrup. Yeah. Yeah. So, what kind of medication and how can you know exactly how to stick to it? Okay. okay. So, um, you you, mentioned, you rightly mentioned cough syrup, especially cough syrups that come with codeine. Uh -huh. right? that, th those cough syrups are prone to abuse and um, reliance, right, yeah. by people that use it. Yeah. Also, we also have something called analgesics. Um, 
like the morphines and the fentanyl and the tramadol. Which right? can be fatal sometimes. Which can be very fatal yeah. and also has tendency to be abused by people that use it. Yeah. Right? That's why you can't, you can't just walk in. That's why even the NDLA had to ban it at some point and NAVDAC also. Yeah. So you can't just walk into a pharmacy and get those medicines. You have to have a valid doctor's prescription to be able to assess those medicines, mm -hmm. right? Um, those are just some examples. Um, so analgesics, pain relief, um, tramadol, codeine, um, fentanyl, morphine, diazepam. Um, those are some medications that you cannot just assess in the pharmacy without a valid doctor. So now let's talk about the penalties. Right. I'm asking because many people don't realize that it's actually a serious thing. Mm -hmm. And the fact that the Pharmacist Council of Nigeria doesn't joke with issues like this. Right. So for a pharmacy that refuses to sell you certain things, yeah. can you explain what the penalties are? So for they, they could close down the pharmacy, right? It's that serious because um, I think some years back, there was an issue where a patient walked in and um, requested for Rohypnol. Okay. Rohypno is this popularly called date rate this, drug. Yeah, date right. rate drug. So um, the patient walked in and the pharmacist, I think, couldn't assess the prescription, and, but the patient was begging and begging and begging. And just said, okay, take. And that led to the, um, the patient, the um, lady was raped and she eventually God. died. God. Right. So it was serious. The, um, the pharmacist was jailed. And I think he's still in jail at this point. So wow. it's, it's actually that serious, right? They could close out the pharmacy. The pharmacist could be... Get into serious trouble. Yes, and go, into, um, go to jail. So it's mm. quite serious. So when a pharmacy asks you to present your valid doctor's prescription, they know what they are doing. They're actually trying to protect your... They're trying to protect your health and actually trying to protect the image of the pharmacy too. Okay. So we, we know quite well that um, a, a, a good pharmacy, a reputable mm. pharmacy... Right is supposed to have a pharmacist in attendance. Mm -hmm. In a situation where the pharmacist in attendance isn't available, yeah. not because it's not been employed, but maybe because it was ill or something, and then the, the store was still open, because yeah. apart from the pharmacist, there's also the store attendant. Yeah. And the, an incident happened in, in such a way that the store attendant mm -hmm. sold, say, for example, the report Rohit, you, no. men yeah. you mentioned just now. How would such a case be handled? <sighs> so... Legally, they are not supposed to even have access to that. But in cases like that where um, the, the patient actually presents a prescription, it has to be properly documented, mm -hmm. properly underlined, properly documented. So you have to write the name of the patient, yeah. write your name, the, the person that dispensed it, write the date, write the hospital is coming from, mm -hmm. the prescriber, all that. Mm -hmm. So in that situation, um, the patient, um, the person on duty can actually dispense, but... It has to be properly documented, but in an ideal case, they're not supposed to have access. It's yes. only the pharmacist. And that's that why some medications are locked away. Exactly, in the yeah. poison's cupboard. Yes. Very true. Yes. Yeah. All right, so thank you so much uh, uh, for shedding light on this, especially for those who don't understand how some things happen yeah. and why pharmacies are so essential. True. And pharmacists as yeah. well. Thank you so thank much you for so your much. time, thank Kenneth. Thank you.